the catacombs. Truly one of the most wholesome places in Hypixel Skyblock. Oh, Head Wither here? Shield, I'm gonna kill <laughs> you. I'm on 10 f***ing scrolls and no handle, I'm in- I've played Skyblock for almost two years now, and the catacombs are where I spent most of my time. But I wasn't always wearing the best gear. I didn't start with weapons worth billions, and there was a time where I didn't even know what master mode was. My point is, I started in the same place as everyone else, with no idea what I was doing. Which is why I've decided to compile some of the things I wish I knew when I was on my way to Catacombs 50. I won't be able to cover absolutely everything in this one video, but if you guys do want another part to this, please let me know. And at any point in the video, if I don't clarify something enough, you can always pop into my Discord server and ask additional questions in the Skyblock advice section. Because it's not about how you begin, it's about where you end up. I don't know if the admins ever intended it to be this way, but like it or not, mods have become an essential part of Skyblock's culture. Before you even begin to think about entering dungeons, you should install a few mods to make your job a little easier, because they offer quality of life features such as on-screen maps, puzzle solvers, score calculator, and a lot more. Some of the best mods I recommend are Skytills and Not Enough Updates, but if you want a premium mod with most features in one place, you can pay the extra $5 for Skyblock Extras. If you want a full overhaul of my personal mods and settings, as well as links to where to download them, I'll leave all of that in the Skyblock Advice section of my Discord server. Be sure to only install mods from their official discords and nowhere else, and never install anything sent to you by an individual, even if that person is a friend. There are several malicious, fake versions of modifications that, when ran, will steal your account info and breach the security of your computer. On screen is a more in-depth video on account stealing made by my friend Simply Sample. if you're interested in more information. Now that we've got our mod set up, let's move on to secrets. Secrets are a major part of dungeons. Scattered around the map in the form of items, chests, and bats, they make up a major part of your score at the end of the dungeon. As you move up the floors of the catacombs, you will need to find more and more of the secrets each run to achieve the best score, which is why it's better to learn them early on rather than being kicked from every party in the future. The best thing about secrets is that they never change. They will always be in the same places in a room, which already makes them infinitely easier to find than my AirPods. The bad thing is there are a lot of rooms, which means there are a lot of secrets. And I'm not gonna lie, learning secrets is a hard thing to do, especially in the beginning when you can barely navigate the rooms. That's the reason I recommend using the Dungeon Rooms mod. This mod highlights every secret with a translucent beacon, and it's how I learned secrets over a year and a half ago. You should use this mod as a resource to learn secrets and room navigation, and not rely on it like a crutch. As soon as I had all the secrets memorized, I turned the mod off and began developing routes. Blindly following the waypoints instead of actually learning them will greatly handicap you when you are unable to keep up with other players who have memorized them. Trust me, I was there, I went through this exact scenario, it was not fun. Running dungeons is an activity that is entirely dependent on speed and efficiency, which is why knowing how to take splits is so important. It's good practice to split up as much as possible during the clear to ensure maximum coverage of surface area. As soon as possible, take a path and begin clearing rooms until you hit a dead end. This path is now your split, and any puzzles or bosses are now your responsibility. Do not begin doing any secrets until you've white checked all the rooms in your split and completed all puzzles. One of the number one rules of dungeons is clear before secrets, because clearing all rooms gives your team more vision and information about the map and can impact the kind of decisions that are made. Once you've fully cleared your split and found all the secrets, only then can you leap to a teammate to assist them with their split or locate any nearby uncleared sections. If you're new to dungeons and you see me grabbing chests through the floor or walking through walls, you might think I'm cheating. But I'm actually not. I'm doing a funny thing called bug exploiting. Any action involving using a pickaxe in dungeons is called stonking, originating from the popular item, the stonk. And although it was never intended, it's now become a feature and a large part of dungeons gameplay. In fact, when the admins patched it last year, there was so much outrage that it got unpatched a couple days later. When you try to mine anything in dungeons, the block disappears for an instant before reappearing instantly again. In the instant where the block disappears, it's actually replaced by what is called a ghost block. If you walk into a ghost block or try to stand on it, you kind of get stuck. But you can do things like flick levers and grab chests through ghost blocks. There are also two ways to make semi-permanent ghost blocks, which don't disappear instantly and allow you to interact through them more consistently. To be able to make a semi-permanent ghost block, you must be able to insta-mine the block. A stonk will allow you to mine most blocks in dungeons, but some will require a stonk and silverfish pet or an efficiency 9 or 10 pickaxe. Some will even require both a silverfish pet and efficiency 10, such as iron bars. The first method is called the ghost pickaxe. For this to work, you need any item with no left click ability in a slot adjacent to the pickaxe. In this example, I use an infinite leap. Open your inventory and hover your mouse over the pickaxe. 
While doing this, you want to hit the hotkey for the pickaxe and then the item in quick succession. If your item is in your 7th slot and your pickaxe is in your 8th, then you should hit the 8 key and then the 7 key immediately right after. I personally have the 7th and 8th slots bound to my mouse 4 and 5 buttons, so I can quickly make a ghost pick with just my thumb. Don't worry if you can't do it consistently at first. If you've done this properly, you should have two pickaxes. The slot which originally held your pickaxe now holds a ghost pick, and any blocks you insta mine with it will become ghost blocks. In this clip, I use a gyrokinetic wand to make a ghost pick, which doesn't work because the gyrokinetic wand has a left click ability. If you right click with the ghost pick, or if your inventory receives an update of any kind, the ghost pick will reset. The second method to create semi-permanent ghost blocks is a method called stonk swapping or sword swapping. It works in a similar way to the ghost block. Hold an item with no left click ability such as spirit leaps or a sword. Then, hockey your pickaxe and left click at the same time. If done correctly, you should be able to create one ghost block. Thong swapping is better for when you only need to mine one or two blocks, but if you need to mine multiple blocks, ghost pickaxe is better. Stonk swapping, like ghost pickaxe, will take time to refine to do consistently, but are important skills used by almost all top players. Ghost pickaxe brings us to our next topic, wall walking, and it's exactly what it sounds like, the act of walking through walls or falling through floors. To do this, you must be standing in an incomplete block such as the bottom portion of a stair, a fence, or a slab. To stand inside a fence, wall block, or slab, you will need the aspect of the void's ether transmission ability to teleport yourself into them. For stairs, you can simply walk onto the bottom portion. Once you are in the incomplete block, you will be able to walk through ghost blocks. You can mine downward or horizontally and use any method of ghost block creation. You can use a ghost pickaxe to mine all the blocks and walk through, or you can walk and mine at the same time or even use sword swapping. Using the Skytoes mod, you can set custom hotkeys that wouldn't be possible otherwise. For example, I have my pets, wardrobe, and equipment menus hotkeyed so I can open them quickly. Here's a screenshot of all the commands I have bound to hotkeys. With this, I can open my pets menu instantly with R or my wardrobe with V instead of having to type out the command or open the skyblock menu. You can also swap helmets super quickly by hotkeying slash equipment. Once your equipment menu is open, all you have to do is click any armor piece or equipment in your inventory to instantly swap it with your current one. It's great for trap room or if you ever need to quickly put on a bonzo mask. The only downside is slash equipment cannot be used while in active combat. The Not Enough Updates mod, also known as NEU, has a useful feature called slot binding. If you play dungeons consistently, your hotbar is probably cluttered and doesn't have enough room for everything you need. Dragging items from slot to slot can be time consuming and you can even sometimes misclick or drag something into the wrong spot. Slot binding solves both of those problems as it allows you to bind different inventory slots into hotbar spaces, enabling you to swap items into specific hotbar slots with just shift click. For 7 million coins, the Sin Seeker Scythe can be a great addition to your hotbar. Think of it like a 4 block AOTE, but if you don't teleport again in one second, it teleports you back to the first block where you used it. Utilized by a few endgame players, the Sin Seeker isn't a super popular or well known item for use in dungeons and is only used for a handful of secret routes. It also takes a lot of time to get good with, but is a cool item and very fun to use regardless. And that wraps up just some of the useful tips that I wish I knew when I was playing dungeons. If you guys want a part 2 to this video, please let me know. And I hope you'll join me next time when we talk about how your car keys have technically traveled further than your car. Okay, bye!